Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers addition of X2 halogens to alkenes. This is called halogenation. This slide covers an overview of alkene halogenation. That's the addition of Cl2 and Br2 to CC double bonds, which proceeds with anti-addition. Here's a representative alkene cyclohexene reacting with X2, a halogen, where X is equal to chlorine or bromine. The thing to know about bromine and chlorine is that these are electron poor molecules. The chlorine and the bromine are both electronegative species, so this molecule, X2, really wants to gain electrons. The other thing about these molecules is they have weak XX bonds, and both of those are going to play a role. In the first step, a halonium ion forms. That proceeds as follows. The halogen approaches the carbon-carbon double bond and forms this transition state, where the blue dotted lines indicate the positions where new sigma bonds are going to be forming. It's going to form a three-membered ring. There's three pairs of electrons that move in this process, and the first thing that happens is the alkene reaches out and attacks the halogen molecule. The electrons in the pi bond of the alkene reach out and make a new bond to one of the halogen atoms, and then the halogen-halogen bond breaks and those electrons go to the other halogen. And next, a pair of electrons on the halogen that was attacked bite back on the alkene to form a new halogen-carbon bond. This is where the two bonds to halogen come from. The intermediate then is something called a halonium ion, which has a three-membered ring with a halogen in it. The halogen here is shown as X, it has two lone pairs and a formal plus charge. There's also a counter ion, X minus, that forms in the process, and that's going to be important later as a nucleophile that comes in and attacks the halonium ion. The halonium ion has partial positive character at the two carbons of the three-membered ring, both here and here, and the halogen can function as a nucleophile and attack each one of them. Backside attack by either chloride or bromide in the second step gives antiproducts. An inversion of configuration occurs at the carbon being attacked. This is SN2-like behavior. So if the nucleophile X- were to attack the upper carbon of this halonium ion, it would come in with a dash bond orientation opposite of where the leaving group is leaving from. Here the leaving group is pointing up, so the nucleophile would have to come in with a dash bond orientation. The result is the following antiproduct, where this halogen is the one that acted as the nucleophile, and this is the one that was part of the original halonium ion. Notice the anti-configuration. The two X's are trans to one another. The other possibility is that the nucleophile might attack the lower of the two carbons, and I'll draw that in green ink here. It comes in with a dash bond orientation opposite of the leaving group in this case, which has wedges. And the result there is we get this stereoisomer product, which is also an antiproduct. These two species are stereoisomers of each other. These are a pair of enantiomers. This slide has a couple of examples of halogenation reactions from a different perspective. These are going to show the halonium ion in the plane of the screen. In the upper example, we've got cis-2-butene reacting with bromine. For perspective, I'm going to rotate the 2-butene on its side to show it from the edge perspective. When the double bond reacts with the bromine, it forms a new bond to one of the bromines. The bromine-bromine bond breaks, and then a pair of electrons on the bromine that was attacked bite back on the carbon-carbon double bond to form the second bond of the three-membered ring. That gives this species, which is called a bromonium ion. It has the bromine in the three-membered ring, and there's a Br-. That Br- will function as a nucleophile in the second step, which involves attack at either one of the two bromonium carbons. That carbon has partial positive character, and that carbon has partial positive character, and they're both subject to attack by Br-. If Br- attacks the left carbon, I'll show that in blue ink, that gives the following antidibromide product. Here, Br- comes in from the back side, which is the lower part of the screen, and the leaving group leaves as it breaks here. That gives this product. Notice that the stereochemistry is conserved in the process. This is a cis alkene that we're starting with, and the two methyl groups, they maintain that stereochemistry chemical arrangement. Now let's consider what happens if the Br- were to attack the right carbon. I'll indicate that in green ink. It comes in from the back side opposite of where the leaving group is leaving from, and that gives the following dibromide product, which is a stereoisomer of the other. These two are a pair of enantiomers. If we consider what happens with the lower structure, we've got a trans 2-butene here reacting with chlorine in this case. I'm going to do the same thing I did above, and I'm going to turn the 2-butene on its side to look at it from an edge perspective. Then we'll show the three pairs of electrons moving to form the intermediate, 
which has a three-membered ring with a chlorine in it and the chlorine with formal plus charge. This is called a chloronium ion, and in this case it happens to be chiral. The upper example was an achiral molecule because it was symmetrical. The lower is a chiral molecule and actually forms as a mixture of two enantiomers. The reason that happens is that chlorine can approach the double bond either from the top face, as is shown here, or it could also approach equally likely from the bottom face, which isn't shown the two chloronium ions lead to the same pair of products, so I'm only going to show one. If the chloronium ion is attacked by Cl- at the left carbon, I'll draw that in blue ink, that gives the following dichloride product, which is again an antiproduct. The other possibility is that chloride could attack the right carbon of the chloronium ion. I'll draw that in green ink, and that gives this product on the right. In this case, the product on the left and the product on the right are identical because it's an achiral molecule. That's different than what happened above, where we had a chiral product. This next slide is going to concentrate on predicting halogenation products. Here's an example where we'll outline a step-by-step -step procedure to help you get the products. We'll start with this alkene and bromine. The first thing you should do is pick one group on each CC double bond carbon to leave in the plane. I'm going to highlight this species with some yellow highlight to indicate that these are the carbons that I'm going to keep in the plane of the screen. And I'll just draw those where these are the carbons that are shown in the highlight over on the left. Then, for reference, I'm going to sketch in two of the carbons in bold here and transfer those highlights over here to the product I'm drawing just to make sure you're aware of which carbons are which. Then in the next step, you should draw a wedged X on one of the CC double bond carbons and make the other group there a dash. On the left carbon of the CC double bond, I'm going to place the bromine on a wedged bond attached to this carbon. So this carbon is going to get a wedged bromine and then the other group, the methyl group, is going to be dashed. I'll draw that in, so we have the wedged bromine on that carbon and a dashed methyl group. Then draw a dashed X on the other CC double bond carbon and make the other group a wedge. Therefore on this carbon we're going to draw a dashed bromine and the hydrogen is going to get a wedge. And this is one of the two stereoisomer dibromide products, an antiproduct. Now to draw the stereoisomer of that, all you need to do is copy the structure and flip the dashes and the wedges. This is going to be an enantiomer. And that's the stereoisomer product. These are the two anti-addition products of bromination of this alkene. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.